Hey guys, it's George, your host, and welcome to the EV Dialogue, where we talk about everything electric, vehicles, and more. First up today, we've got some reports about Tesla factory upgrades. Tesla Shanghai factory upgrade boosts production by 30%. So let's dive a little bit deeper and see what the report has to say. Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory has finished upgrading production facilities for its popular Model Y car, enabling it to increase capacity by almost a third. The plant, already Tesla's largest manufacturing base worldwide, is now able to assemble, check this out, 2,000 Model Y sports utility vehicles per day. That's about a 30% more than previously that they were producing on a daily basis. There's some also news about further upgrades to the Shanghai factory, which is that they're actually conducting an upgrade of the production line used to assemble the Model 3 cars due for completion not too far away, August the 7th. Look at it, the daily output for the Model 3 after the upgrades, it will be expected to jump by more than 30% to 1,200 units per day. If we combine the 2,000 units per day with the 1,200 units per day, that's 3,200 units a day, which is a total of 1,168,000 vehicles produced at the Shanghai factory alone. Now, something to keep in mind is that, as we all know, Tesla has four factories in total, which is um, quite incredible when you think about it. One factory is can, after the upgrades, produce over a million vehicles on an annual basis. And I'm sure that they're going to be scouting more sites and potentially be able to upgrade some of their um, new and existing factories. So let's see what happens um, in terms of this space. Also pretty good news for a lot of Model Y customers or a lot of Tesla customers who are waiting months uh, to actually get their uh, vehicles delivered. I know here in Australia, they were pretty much uh, sold out within a couple of days and the wait times are ranging up to a few months. So all really good news, welcome news. So the next update that we have is, as we all know, that supply is pretty much everything uh, for any industry, but particularly at the moment with, with all the EVs that's happening. Now, there's some updates here that the Tesla dry lithium cathode production facility frameworks are actually finished. So the Tesla Gigafactory includes an automated 4680 battery production facility and the framing for that has actually been put up, which is actually good news. There is a first facility, which is a prototype one, uh, 4680 factory in Fremont, California. This is the second one uh, at Giga Texas. And the third 4680 battery factory is currently being built at Tesla's Giga Berlin factory, which is also uh, pretty good news in terms of the supply chain front and securing batteries and supplies is probably going to be key to being able to grow um, over the next few years. The report here says the framework of the building that will supply the dry cathodes for the on-site on -site battery production facility from raw battery materials supplied by North American mines. So basically they're creating their own batteries and not relying on other, um, other parties or other suppliers to get some of their batteries. Although they do have some um, deals with Panasonic and uh, CATL, which they've also announced 4680 uh, battery factories in North America to also supply Tesla with batteries. So I think this is actually pretty good news because like I mentioned, in terms of supply, it's probably key to advancing a company's growth. Next up, we have some news about Tesla's unlimited connectivity plan, including navigation now expires after eight years. Basically, from the way I understand this is that Tesla was actually um, providing some free data connectivity um, and it seemed to be like an unlimited thing. Uh, so they've made the change uh, to its free data connectivity tier. This includes a standard connectivity package which adds basic navigation features without live traffic. 
uh, views or satellite maps and the ability to stream music over Bluetooth will now expire after eight years. After eight years, the way I understand it is that you'll have to pay a monthly subscription of uh, $10 per month. For me, not really a big deal. I mean, nothing in this life is really free, especially when you're paying for goods and services. And I think uh, getting the standard connectivity package for an eight year period is um, quite a significant amount of time. On to some other news in terms of a competitor for Tesla, which is GM. Now, they're actually trailing behind Tesla in terms of their EV sales. But what's interesting is the CEO, Mary Burra, bet the company that that will change. And so let's have a look at why she thinks that will change. One of the things last year that GM said that it planned to invest $30 billion in the electric vehicles by 2025, including revamping some of their existing plants, building US battery plants, and launching 30 electric models globally, which is actually quite um, a significant investment over, over the next few years. Now, like I mentioned, Tesla has a dominant lead with 60%, 66% of, you know, of the small um, US uh, market being captured by Tesla and GM around six to eight percent. However, they're starting uh, to ramp up. Now, another reason why they believe that they might actually take over is because they've developed something called um, the Ultium. It's a new platform, which essentially is a base that could be used to produce a range of electric vehicles with the company's batteries built into the frame. Until then, GM and other legacy automakers were pushing out EVs by essentially stuffing battery packs into modified vehicle frames. It was a chunky, sorry, it was a clunky process that could get cars and trucks out quickly, but didn't unlock the full potential of the vehicles. So what they believe, GM believes that this new platform, this Ultium platform, I believe it's the way that they've designed the, the sort of the battery pack onto the frame will help them actually um, be more efficient in their in their production in their production lines. Now, Mary Barra believes that the Ultium platform and the supporting technologies that it has, including its batteries and its software systems, Altify are the foundation for doubling the company's revenue by 2030. So GM's aiming to double their revenue by the year 2030. Now we've got some breaking news about EV tax credits, which actually could be really welcome news for people who are looking to buy EV vehicles in general. So what we've got here is that the US Senate deal to expand EV tax credits, income caps and price caps. So what is it? So Tesla, GM and Toyota might now become eligible for the tax credit again and it won't be geared towards rich people or pricey evs so basically the us senate's potential ev tax credit could would remain at seven and a half thousand dollars though there would be a smaller credit for people who buy a used ev let's let's dive deeper into maybe a little bit of the details of this tax credit the potential credit will include a new four thousand dollar credit 30% of the sale price for people who buy a used EV. And the current US federal EV tax credit provides up to $7,500 based on the size of the car's battery. The current US federal EV tax credit provides up to $7,500 based on the size of the car's battery. The credit was originally capped at 200,000 EVs sold per automaker. So basically Tesla, GM, Toyota um, would not be eligible for this credit. But under this new proposal, the bill will actually remove that 200,000 vehicle cap, but put a cap in place for the dollar amount of the EVs, which you can benefit from in terms of the credit. So basically, electric trucks, vans, and SUVs will have a cap of $80,000, and cars will be capped at $55,000. It will also attach an income uh, threshold or an income cap to this. So if you're an individual 
and you make you make up to $150,000 annually, you'd be eligible for the credit. And for couples, the cap would be a $300,000 combined income. So basically, the plan plans to actually offer this as a rebate at the point of sale. Whereas currently the way that it works, it's, it's a tax credit and people, customers would have to wait till tax time to be able to uh, get their credits. I'm not actually too sure if it's passed. I don't think it is. I think this is just um, the part of the process in pushing this bill forward. Um, but if we actually have something official, I'll definitely uh, look into that and let you know. One final thing about it to note is that they will not require a union requirement in the bill. Uh, however, it will probably require that the EV makers produce their vehicles in America and probably source a lot of their materials from um, a lot of American suppliers or, or factories. And some final news about Tesla insurance. They've actually expanded into two more states, Maryland and Utah, now totaling a total of 11 states. One thing we need to keep in mind about this insurance is that a lot of customers are actually expressing satisfaction with this insurance because it's actually helping them save money with reports that it can actually save them up to 60% lower than what they had previously paid uh, by insurers. Now, the reason it can do that is because we know Tesla's provide a lot of data back to um, you know home base and with the real-time data it basically assesses the drivers um, you know the way they drive and probably adjust some of the insurance premiums there so uh, these were all the um, updates we had for you here today at the EV dialogue I hope you enjoyed that please be sure to support the channel hit the subscribe like and notification bell take care stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.